Hello there reason people, Pooper here and welcome to my channel. And today we're going to be looking at how we can get a multi, or a contact multi, um, working in reason so we can have multiple lanes within our sequencer and they're going to get off to one actual contact with obviously the different layers in. I'm talking to the different um, MIDI ports there. So before we actually move on, this is the loopback MIDI software I actually use. I've put the link in the description. For Mac users, you've got it built in. You're very, very lucky. Um, obviously, for Windows users, there's plenty of other loopbacks you can use. You don't have to actually have to use this one. I like this one. Um, under the same particular developer, they've got a network version, so you can actually run MIDI across your network as well, which is absolutely fantastic. Once you've got it actually up and running, this is kind of what it looks like. You should only, if I remember rightly, it's been years and years and years ago since I've actually installed this, uh, you just get that one little port set up and none of these are set up. If it's not set up at the top, you literally just come down here, type in the name mm -hmm. and you click your plus sign and that's it, it created. Under the advanced, I've never, ever, ever, in all the years I've run this, had to touch that at all. There's a little about screen and obviously you can obviously do a little bit of a donate to the person. So what we're actually going to do is set our port up. I'm going to call it contact, nice and original, but I'll remember that in six months time. I'm going to click on this plus sign. It creates it, but it creates it right at the very bottom. So you have to scroll to the bottom and you can actually see it. That's our, our MIDI port. So what we've got, we've got ourselves several contacts. You don't have to have it set up this way. I just happen to have it set up this way. I'm going to combine these up and I'm going to then uh, send the MIDI out via the combinators. That way I don't have to have double MIDI channels up. I just thought I'd do it this way so I can sort of show you it working one way and also show you how it works the other way as well. So as I say, it's just going to be a simple case of getting these all combined up to start with. In fact, I'm going to leave this one because I'm going to just connect a just a normal MIDI out to it and we'll do that one a little bit differently just to show you. Uh, so as I say, we're going to be using our MIDI out and that's what the important thing is, this is what we're going to be sending our data out and then we're going to hit our loop back. Our loop back is then going to come back and actually hit um, uh, Kirsch View, even though Kirsch View is running inside of Reason. So the important thing is obviously you've got to set up your channels, which I know I'm talking channel five on this particular one, and my MIDI port, obviously we set up contact. That's what we've got to do. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to whiz through and I'm actually going to set up the rest of these to be exactly the same. Now for this final one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set myself a MIDI port up but this has got no MIDI data coming out to it. So obviously the important thing, what we've got to do next is actually copy the MIDI data over to go out of that actual port. So what the MIDI data sorts of that contact has got to go to that MIDI port, which happens to be this particular one here. So I'm just going to make a copy of that. Let me just drag that down. Let's make a quick copy and let's clean out the old, old, old lines. So I'll make it nice and ordered. And there we go, that should be it. So that bit of MIDI data is now just gonna go specifically to that. And there's also this piece of data will actually go to this contact as well. Whereas all this other MIDI data is actually going to the combinators, which will be going to both parts. So what I'm gonna do now is set myself up a Kirsch view and that's going to actually host the um, contact itself. I'm using uh, the VST2 version. So I'm gonna grab that over, it's opened up another screen and I've got to use this little arrow to pull it open. If not, all the screens or say screens, all the controls are actually hidden. Just be aware if you're using the VST3 version of Kirsch View, you only actually get to see two um, audio outs. So to get the rest, because VST3 is a dynamic, you just keep adding yourself uh, mixer channels and you can see that they're coming along and you can add as many as you want or as, yeah, you don't have to add as many as I'm doing. I'm just playing around, just demonstrating. So I'm just gonna move this stuff up so I like my screen nice and ordered. So the next thing we're gonna do is actually bring a contact in and it's actually probably already popped up on the screen. So I just need to double click on this word plugins and it, there it is. I'm gonna be running contact five because contact seven crashes on my system. It doesn't matter if I run contact standalone inside Curse View, inside Reason, it just likes to crash. So I'm just gonna use contact five. It's not like it's an application I use a lot. So saved off another screen. So let me quickly pull it across. Um, I've got a multi that I was playing around with. So let me quickly go and load that up. Um, I say I don't use contact that well, uh, do I wish to merge this? Yes, so uh, I don't know the <laughs> interface too, too well. So there we go, we're all set up. And what we should be able to see is we've got ourselves audio channels 
and we've also got ourselves uh, different MIDI channels set up. Um, so uh, the audio channels are actually obviously uh, going out to different outputs at the bottom. So the green wires up here, which I'm wiring up now to the output, um, is the uh, audio and the orange wires uh, is actually to do with the MIDI. So I'm just gonna quickly wire up a number of these. Um, in fact, I don't think I'm using them all, but I might as well go ATT, just wire them up as I'm here. And the next thing, obviously, I'm going to need to do is to actually bring in that bit of MIDI data. So with MIDI out, it's sending out off to uh, this contact MIDI port. There's my contact MIDI port. Let me wire up my MIDI to my MIDI. So that should be talking to that. So now if I was actually to fire off reason, it should actually run this. You, however, you won't be able to hear anything because even though we've wired up these output ports, we've now got to do the same over here. So we've got to send these off to, uh, obviously, new mix channels. So we need to do that for every single one of these. Cool. Um, as we sort of go along, it's best to get things uh, named up because obviously uh, KV Elements 1 gets very confusing in the mixer. Cool, so that's all set up. And theoretically, we should be going. So the rack here, these are obviously one bus, which are obviously the individual um, items in the rack, and obviously the one that says elements, that's part of the multi, which is going out to its same. So they're actually getting exactly the same bit of MIDI data, and obviously we can hear the difference between the two. So that bit of music you can hear is from a 1950 series called Peter Gunn. Um, I must admit this is pre my time. I don't know this too well. This is something I've actually found out since. I know that particular bit of music from this brilliant game here called Spy Hunter, which from the, the 1980s. Um, there's also another brilliant little version of this particular track, uh, which is done by The Art of Noise, which obviously we're going to actually play out to. So thank you for watching and bye for now.